Hey, how's it going? My name is Joe. So recently I wanted to play some old games on my Mac, although it's possible to use the keyboard and mouse, but I wanted to use a game controller instead. After some research, I figured out there's a few options. I have a PS3, the Wii, and the old Xbox 360 controller that I could use. I found this piece of software called Xbox Controller Driver for Mac OS on GitHub, which I thought I'd give it a try. There are plenty of videos on YouTube on how to install the driver and what games are compatible with it and the full functionality of the driver itself. I don't think it's possible to test out every single game there is on the market with this particular driver and that's not the point of this video. I went ahead and installed the latest driver called 360 Controller 1.0.0-Alpha 3. As the website says, this release requires macOS 10.11 or later since I'm running on the latest version of macOS as of today's video, 10.14.6. I thought that would work and it claims that Alpha 3 will also add wireless controller support. I installed the driver without much difficulty. The only thing that you need to look out for is at some point a pop-up will ask you to give the extension Drew Mills uh, to allow the extension to have access to your computer in the security preference setting. So once that's done, uh, all you need to do is restart the computer. This is the point where I ran into the first problem. I plugged in my Xbox 360 controller via the USB port and it doesn't work. It just doesn't show up. It says no devices found. I disconnected the controller, tried restarting and also tried to reinstall the Alpha 3 driver once again, but no matter what I did, the, it, the controller just would not show up on the settings menu. So at this point I was tempted to give up and I just wanted to get rid of this, this driver and uninstall it. I went to the advanced tab and hit uninstall. That doesn't work either. So I went back onto the main system preference page and tried to right click on the driver itself and remove it that way. That failed as well. At this point, I was a little bit annoyed and I went online and looked through those Reddit posts and did a lot of search and just looked through the uh, all the system folders as well as watched a couple of YouTube videos and even used some codes in the terminals that I found online to try and remove the driver, but just nothing worked. At this point, I was ready to give up on either leaving the driver there or using my time machine backups to restore my system because I'm a little bit OCD and it just bugs me knowing that there's a piece of software there that doesn't do anything or whatever it's happening with it. So I was tempted to just to restore my system to a couple of hours earlier with my uh, regular time machine backups on my NAS. I knew it would take a few hours to do my system restore, so I was contemplating whether to go ahead or not, and then suddenly I had a light bulb moment. I decided to try and install the Alpha 2 driver to see if that would fix the problem in terms of removing the driver itself from my computer. At that point, I wanted to give up and I didn't have the mood to play any games anymore. I went through the same process and installed the Alpha 2 driver, installed it, restarted the computer, and I just plugged in the Xbox 360 controller in just once more just to see if that would work. And voila, it actually worked this time. Even though that wasn't my point, I wanted to uninstall the driver, but I thought, what the heck, I'll just give it a quick try to see if it would work, and it actually showed up this time. I checked all the buttons in the settings and everything worked. I was pleasantly surprised that even the rumble function worked. If you use the LT or RT triggers, it would progressively vibrate more intensely on the controller as you use the analog triggers. So that's pretty cool because I didn't expect the uh, vibration function to work as well. Anyway, the key takeaway for this video is to read instructions properly and check which version of macOS you're using, as well as which controller you're intending to use with this particular driver. And make sure you check out their website to see which controllers are compatible. For example, the 360 wireless controller currently doesn't work with the latest driver as well as the latest Mac OS version. I didn't try it with the wireless one because my main aim was to use the wired version, so that didn't work for me. So uh, your mileage may vary. Uh, like I said, my problem was that the wired controller didn't work, never mind the wireless one, and I wasn't able to uninstall the driver itself. So I think the latest Alpha 3 version of the driver is still quite buggy, so I would uh, use the Alpha 2 driver instead as a recommendation. Awesome controllers like the Xbox One wireless or the PS4 are supposed to be natively supported by the Mac OS via the Bluetooth connection. So there's no need for this driver, whereas the wired Xbox One controller may have some issue if you use the wrong cable. So it's best again to check out the website, read it carefully to see which controller you're intending to use, if it's compatible with it, and which Mac OS driver you're using. 
And finally, if you remember, I wasn't able to remove the Alpha 3 driver from my system preferences. If you have the same issue, you might want to give it a try by installing the Alpha 2 driver. Just install it on top of the system itself and see if that would fix your issue, because that's certainly what helped me in my case, as in the controller worked again, and I was able to use the uninstall function within the advanced tab inside the Xbox 360 controller driver preference menu to uninstall the driver after I installed the Alpha 2 driver on top of the Alpha 3 driver that I've installed in the first place. Does that make sense? I don't get it. Anyway, as mentioned, I won't be doing a ton of uh, game tests using uh, this controller and this driver. There are plenty of videos online that you can check out. Uh, they go into much more in depth. And in this case, I just wanted to use it with the open emu, emu. And you, 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 whatever you call it, the uh, app to play some, you know, really old classic games, and it worked flawlessly. So I'm happy with that. I have no intention to do play any of the modern games on my Mac because, like I said, this is a 2013 MacBook, and obviously it's not very meant to be meant to be used for playing intensive new 3D games. So uh, I'm happy that it works with the emulator. So that's what I'm going to use it for. Okay, that's about it for today's video. I didn't actually plan to shoot this video in the first place. I just wanted to play some quick games using the Xbox 360 controller. I thought it was going to be an easy task, but as you saw, there's a few problems that I had. And hopefully if you had the same issue or if you ran into the same problem, like with the devices not showing up or if it's just not uninstalling, hopefully this might help you. It certainly worked for me. And if you have any questions, let me know down below. I'll try and help you out, but I'm not really an expert in this case. I just tried and tried and found this particular solution to have worked for me. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.